the first question for six marks says give reasons uh, or determine giving reasons for other angles equal to x so x is this one over here so you need to find four angles that will also be equal to x so the first angle that i can see is if i make this type of shape over here i can see there is a f so that means that angle a1 is going to be x angle a1 will be the same as x and that's because of corresponding angles corresp angles y because pq is parallel to ac all right so that's equal to x now if i look inside this triangle over here I know that that is a isosceles triangle because these two sides are the same. So what I would do is I would say that AC is equal to BC, and that's because that was given to us. So then I can say, therefore, angle A1 must be the same as angle B, and that's because of the angles opposite equal sides so that means that angle b is equal to x okay the next one that i see if i look at um if i look at this tangent over here then what i want us to do is to look at this chord now can you see the angle in between see that angle that is angle a2 now we can use the tan chord theorem. Now the way that that works is I want you to take your two fingers and put one of them on A and put one of them on C. Then what you must try to do is you must try to make these two circles join together at one point. So for example, if you travel along this line and if you travel along this line, then they will come together over here. So according to the tan chord theorem, it means that angle A2 is the same as angle B. And that is the tan chord theorem. So we now have one, two, sorry, two and three. We need one more. Can you see that if we look at um, this line over here, this line over here, and this line over here, there's an alternating angle. Can you see that? There is an alternating angle with P. So we can say that angle P is also equal to X, and that is because of alternating angles, because the line AC is parallel to the line PQ. And so there we have it, guys. We have found four other angles equal to X. Okay, I'm just going to go put all those X's in so long. X, X, uh, there we go. Okay, so the next question now says, um, prove that ABPR, ABPR. So let's go find ABPR. Okay, so there is the cyclic quadrilateral that they want us to prove, ABPR. Now, there are three ways to prove that something is a cyclic quad. Three ways to prove. Okay, so the first one is the following. Number one, if you have a cyclic quadrilateral that looks something like this, then the opposite angles, so if this is um, if this is 30 degrees, then this must be one, or let, let me rather do something like this. If this is A1, that's what I'm trying to say. If this is A1 and this is A2, we know that A1 plus A2 must be equal to 180. That is one way to prove it. The second way to prove it is to have something like this. Is to have an exterior angle. And that exterior angle must be the same as the opposite interior angle. So if this is A1 and this is A2, then A1 must be equal to A2. Okay, now the third way is when you have a cyclic quadrilateral that looks more like. So you have something like that. 
but then you can almost see that there's like a butterfly. Can you see the butterfly over here? Or some people like to call it a bow tie. You know, a bow that you wear when you go to like a matric dance or something like that. As soon as you can see a bow tie, then if you can prove that these two angles at the top are the same, or you can maybe prove that the angles at the bottom are the same, then it's also a cyclic quadrilateral. So we need to look at this diagram very carefully. And what I always like to tell students is the following. Can you see number one and number two? There are no lines going across. Can you see that? There's no lines going across. But if you look at number three, there are lines going across. So normally, if there are lines going across, then you should try do number three. So if we look at this diagram, if we look at this cyclic quadrilateral over here, we can see that there are lines going across. Here's the one line and here's the other line. So it's probably going to be number three. It is um, this angle over here is the same as this angle over here. And so we can see that there's like a bow tie kind of thing happening over there. And so we can say that um, angle a, B, C is equal to um, angle R, P, R, P, A, which is this one over here. And so therefore, um, A, B, P, R is a cyclic quadrilateral. And the reason will be converse angles in same segment. Because normally when you have a bow tie, when these are the same, you would say angles in the same segment. But when it's the other way around, when you're trying to prove that something is a cyclic quad, you say converse, which almost means opposite. Prove that BA over BQ, okay, BA over BQ is equal to BC over uh, QR. Usually, when we have this type of thing over here, where there's like a fraction, it could either be proportionality, or it could even be similarity. This one is actually going to be similarity. If you look carefully, this triangle here, let's do, oh, I can even change the width of that. Oh, fantastic. That's going to look nice. Let's look at this triangle here. Oh, that's really nice. that triangle there, and then we can look at the big triangle. And we can say in triangle, A, B, C, and triangle B, Q, R. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go prove that those two triangles are similar to each other. Okay, so that's gonna be quite easy. Can you see that in the red and the blue, angle B is going to be common? So we can say that angle B, is going to be the same as angle B. That's because of uh, common. Then um, angle A1 is the same as angle Q. We already proved that. You can also say corresponding, but we already proved that earlier. And then remember, why is the third angle always equal? Well, that's just because of the sum of angles in a triangle. Hope you guys remember that. So we can say that in the blue triangle, it's going to be angle um, and let's do the red one first. Let's do the red one. So in the red one, it's going to be C1 is equal to um, angle R. And so that's going to be QRB, QRB. And that's just because of sum of angles in a triangle. Okay, so now we have three things, three angles that are the same in both triangles. So now we can say, therefore, um, triangle A, B, C is similar. Now get the order right for the next one. So if you're using A, B, C, then that goes with Q, B, R. And the reason for this is angle, angle, angle. Right, now remember, whenever you write out two triangles being similar, you should always use your uh, ratios. Remember those? The ones that go A, B over Q, B, equals to BC over BR, which is equal to AC over 
QR. And the reason for that is you can just say similar triangles. What I then like to do is I, I go to the question and I try to see which letters I already have. So I've got AB, I've got BQ, I've got BC, and then that's all that I have. Okay, and then I also have a QR. So what we can now do, I'm just gonna erase a little bit now just to make a bit of space for ourselves. So we, we definitely gonna choose this one over here, but then we don't know if we should choose this one or this one, but let me show you a little trick. If you look at AC on the diagram, look at where AC is. AC is over here. And is that not the same as BC? So we can say that AC is equal to BC um, and that we already proved or it was proven. So we can now say that AB over QB is equal to, um, I'm using these two now, but now AC, we can write it as BC instead. And then all of a sudden we have the answer.